So welcome to MariaDB FOSTEM Talks. My name is Monty and I'm going to talk about how we are implementing atomic DDLs in MariaDB. In other words, uh, ensuring that when you do a drop and uh, or create or a name table or something similar, there will be no old things left. But uh, to understand uh, why we are or have to do this, I will start with a little bit of MariaDB history. When I originally created MySQL, there were some things I needed. I wanted to be sure that uh, we have a format that is extensible for storing definitions, so that I'd, that upgrade would be easy and uh, you should be able to easily move tables from one version to another one or between versions or systems. Uh, so it has to be future-proof and I wanted to have it really, really fast because back, day, back then computers were not fast so uh, opening a table should be as instant as possible. It should also be easy to back up things and move, and after backup, move and replace those uh, tables. The reason for that was that um, in the old times we had lots of customers who were using the predecessor of MySQL over modem, and then they also wanted to copy the tables and use them locally. So it was critical that uh, uh, we could just update individual tables trivially for end users. But there were, and MySQL was inherited in all unary code, so they get all these features and the benefits. And the fact that uh, we automatically discover tables on disk when you put them there uh, was, in hindsight, very good because it allowed us to easily implement uh, discovery for other things who are not local, like we do for the S3 storage, storage engine or column store or expand tables. So when you do um, information schema queries or you do show tables, we always scan the disk for frame tables and, and then, then also we ask the other engines who support discovery that do you have any new tables that you haven't told me about. But there were some problems with the old design it, it, uh, because uh, when you work with multiple files, things are not atomic if you get a, a crash in the middle. So if you get a crash uh, just after a table was created, but without the frame being created or, or doing a drop, and we only drop some of the tables, you get something that is not in sync. And if you do multiple table rename, for, for example, I uh, want to swap A and B, in which case you would do rename A to C and B to A and C to B. And if you get a crash there in the middle, you, it's not clear what data you have in which tables. And uh, what is uh, kind of even worse is that if you do a drop, for example, drop tables and some tables was dropped and get a crash, then you will, will get not get uh, the statement into the replication log. So the slave will not have the same state as the master. And uh, a last my uh, minor problem, but still a problem for those who have uh, thousands of tables, is that if you do info information schema queries over all tables, for example, you want to know uh, which table has a column with this name, it can be rather slow because we have to do a scan for all tables and open the frame file just to be able to answer that question. So when we started to work on atomic DDL, there were some things of the old of the old that we want to keep. We want to have something that works for all storage engines, not only for InnoDB, like in MySQL. It should be really still very fast to open the tables because tables are opened all the time and it should be easy to copy tables between databases without an export and import. We still need export and import for uh, InnoDB, but uh, we are planning to fix that. For most of the storage engines, you don't. So the solution that I've been working on is described in the MDEV17567. And um, 
Shortly, we don't want to change anything on how things are stored on disk. Uh, the idea was to extend the DDL log that is used to ensure that partition changes are atomic to also handle all the other kind of DDLs. And we, have, we want to ensure that the binary log always is correct. For, uh, for example, if you do a drop of, uh, of five tables and you get a crash between the tables are dropped and the binary log should be written. In that case, things are not logged in the binary log. And that has to be fixed. A lot of the changes is already done. I'm working on those uh, just now. Uh, I've been working for, for some months on all, between all the tasks and it will, they will all be in 10.6. You can find things in my currently development tree. And what is working now completely is rename table and rename view, any combinations, any word circles. Um, drop table and drop view is working, and drop triggers and drop database. And what I will start working on next is create table and alter table because I have cha changed a lot of the code uh, or the old DDL login code and extending it to make it generally usable, these two should be rather easy to do. Probably the, the, the most common cases is where you see a problem with the old code is that you have an alta table which can take a really, really, really long time. In this case, we create uh, uh, temporary tables to store the data and uh, then we do a swap of the day, uh, the of the old tables to the new one. But if you get a crash in the middle of the table, which can take a long time, the temporal tables may be still on disk, kind of forever. We have done some hacks in InnoDB to automatically delete those. But um, with atomic DDL work, we are trying to ensure that there's no need for hack. Everything is done in a simple and elegant manner. So, how was this done? So, the, this is basically a description, a semantic description of uh, how Rename is working. And we don't need to work on temporal tables because if you get a server crash, all temporal tables are gone anyway. So, we only have to work with real tables. So, the basic idea is that uh, before you do anything, like before you do a, a rename, we write in the DDL log an entry to say that what we're going to do. And when it's the rename is done, we mar add a marker that we succeeded with the rename and now we go into the next step. We're updating triggers and table. And when those are done, we write a uh, mark, the old entry that uh, no data, uh, rename is completely done. And this, this we do for all tables. And after everything is done, we m create an XID, a unique identifier to, that is used to uh, see that this, this entry exists in the binary log. So you write this unique identifier in the DDL log for, for the whole operation. And then we write one entry in the binary log together with the XID. So this was new code I added. And uh, then we write things in the binary log. And then the last thing is we do, we mark the DDL entry done, in which case basically is that we free them for other uses. So during recovery, uh, first we scanned the, the binary log to check that which uh, XIDs uh, exist in it. And then we go through the DDL re uh, recovery log and check the, uh, and mark those that was in the binary log that we don't need to do anything. And for the remaining one, we either roll back the, the renames or if all renames was completely done and uh, 
then we can just write the entry to the we could theoretically mark the entry to them by analog. For rename, we always draw back if something goes uh, wrong until it's written in the binary log. For drop, we do a little bit more. So, so the same thing idea is there for drop. Uh, we loop over all tables, we mark what uh, we plan to do and mark them to be done and also remember the different phases so that we know if something goes wrong where to continue. So drop is a little bit or, um, different from rename because if something goes with rename goes wrong with rename we know that we can always roll things back and uh, get things how they were originally. So we never have to write it to by the binary log. But drop, drop is permanent when it happens. So assuming that you do a drop of five tables and you get a crash because somebody kills the server at the fourth table, uh, we can't roll those back. So what we are using the DDL log for is to um, finish the drop of the last table to ensure that it's completely done. And this was using some code that we added in 10.5 .5, where, uh, where we always guarantee that a drop is complete with there is never any old tables left. And uh, then we remember those things that was dropped and uh, when we have gone through the whole uh, dialogue then we write drop commands uh, for both views and uh, tables in the binary log if they were not there. So for uh, drop database we are basically reusing the code uh, for drop table. The only difference is that after the last table we have been instead of uh, writing the different different drop tables statement that was done during drop database, we instead write drop database and we use the same XID to uh, define that was this entry there or not. The difference is that if uh, the database was still exist on, on disk and uh, was not dropped, but we only drop tables, then we only generate a drop table and we drop view commands for what was actually dropped. So in other words, this uh, ensures that the master and the slave is always up to date and you never have any orphan tables or, or, or out of sync files. Uh, one thing. Okay, here we have a pause. Uh, so So one thing I forgot to, to mention was that uh, we all also use the DDL recovery code when we do a roll up, rollback of a rename when something goes wrong. And that means that the code is quite tested because it's not only have used in crash scenario scenarios, it's also used in regular things. And that also makes it much easier to test. And as part of the atomic the DL work, I added a new way to restart and uh, test the server. And uh, for once, we have uh, the DL code, who is where we get crashes or simulate crashes in every single point of, uh, of logic where things are written on disk. So I've been able to verify that in spite of Anywhere where you get where, where you can get potential a crash or the server goes down, we actually can recover things. So the cost of atomic rename, we write things in the D dialog and every time we write things we have to sync because we have to assume that we get a crash uh, uh, afterwards and a hard crash, in other words the server goes down and nothing is synced to disk. So. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, about six sinks per table, 
um, um, for the whole operation. If you have one table, if you have more tables, of course, the score is less. So it, there is some cost, but I would say the benefit of being, having everything atomic and consistent is worth that. And after all, this is not that often do you do rename or drop tables. There's a, some confusion about information schema and atomic. And just because uh, with, or they say they are not related in the sense that it's, uh, they are basically different independent tasks. tasks. So uh, after the atomic DDL work is done, uh, things will always be uh, up to date and the slave will also be up to date. But the question is still how to solve the other problem in, in the all the sign of having information schema tables not as fast as they could be. So we do have some optimization. So if you do some questions about just one table, for example, show uh, columns for this uh, table through an information schema, that's very fast because we only have to open that one, that one single table. But if you do it for others, things can, can get uh, or go slower the more tables you add. So we have uh, ideas of how to fix that. So we plan to do a new data dictionary, still without having any notable changes on disk. St still, everything should look uh, as before. You can easily upgrade to a, from a system that has uh, not a, a new data dictionary to the other one. Things should just work. So the idea is to add some one or a set of, set of table where we store the definitions and uh, on when opening a table, we will always use this as the true source of things. But there is a couple of cases where we have to go to the FRM that still will be created. And uh, that is if we notice that this table doesn't exist, then we go to the FRM and, and see if it exists, and then we read the definition. So that makes the table still movable or in the case of that somebody has just copied in a table over an old one, then we'll be able to uh, detect that, hey, there's a difference between the uh, table in the, in the data dictionary and the real one, in which case we will go to the FRM to get the latest one. So the effect will be that open will be faster uh, because we don't have to go to disk as often, at least not opening a file and closing, which can be quite slow. And uh, we can do com complex queries. And we still have all the all benefit of easy backups, even moving table. You can just take it down a table and just jot down a server and just copy them. So. If you have any questions, uh, I will be available on uh, Sulib during this session so that you can ask me anything related to this. Thank you.